Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Liana Brinder, Business Editor for the International Business Times. Joining me now is Johan Xavier. He's the Regional CFO at Saatchi & Saatchi in Asia Pacific and Greater China. So hi Johan, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. So Asia is one of the biggest growth areas in the world and naturally businesses across the globe are expanding their services overseas. But with that comes naturally cultural change. So what would you say are the biggest challenges for CFOs in tackling, I suppose, cross-cultural issues? Um, I can relate to that, particularly talking about our industry, the marketing and advertising profession. Things are evolving quite rapidly, particularly in Asia. I look around our offices and four of the big offices, New Zealand, Vietnam, Indonesia, are headed by women. So my thought process is how do I make our CFOs connect better with women and cross-culturally? When I say cross-culture, I'm not talking about just uh, ethnicity or color. I'm talking about people with different nationalities, gays, uh, all different walks of life, people with disabilities as well. So the other thing that's changing drastically in Asia is it's about wealth accumulation. So there's a huge middle class that's evolving. And as a result, and in that middle class, there's a lot of people who are educated, women, men, all nationalities, and taking up high positions. So as a CFO, if they don't connect or adapt, they'll perish. So it's not about the West and the rest. It's about everybody right now. But how does the sea change in company culture come about when there are different attitudes, conversations and laws in regards to the disabled, sexism, ethnic minorities and gay people? In the olden days, Caucasians running the world and ruling the world. Now it's not about Caucasians ruling the world, it's about everybody because economic power comes from everywhere today. Um, so. Um, and you said something very important that it's before I even talk about all these changes that's taking place fundamentally as a CFO that what we have to look at is the company culture, what it stands for and what it won't stand for. Uh, for instance, Saatchi and Saatchi um, has this motto, uh, the solid belief that nothing is impossible. I mean, for our clients, it's a promise of quality for our competition. It's something of a challenge and a threat. And for our uh, employees, it's a kind of an inspiration. So uh, the company culture is, should be the foundation before we start connecting with people, because that will lay the path as to how we proceed and connect. So at the boardroom level, how do you manage conflict management? You look at the individual. Every person is a combination of personal characteristics, physical features, preferences, beliefs, and abilities. So in other words, as I said to you, every person is a unique microculture. Um, in most large corporations, diversity is represented. Females, males, gays, Caucasians, Muslims. So when you go into any type of negotiations or resolution management, or any type of business discussions, even conflict management, you take that into consideration and you have a very different type of engagement and a connection between that individual and yourself. So you use that to your advantage. You look at a person like an individual, not as a lump together resource of a generalization, or he's Jewish, or he's Indian. You take the person's individual characteristics. Do you think companies, regardless of sector, are applying enough time, money, and resources into diversity programs? Uh, I believe that there's not too much emphasis placed on this uh, aspect. There's always there can be more investment placed, particularly in training. Training those people who are untapped, who has potential, but be for whatever reason, because they're women coming from birth from the, of their children. Because most corporations, I mean, I hate to say this, look at it differently. Oh, you know what? She has a baby brain and so she won't be able to connect for some time. That's not true. We, there's a huge amount of uh, talent that's gone untapped. 
And if you're going to make those incremental changes and the incremental value that's going to be created from uh, companies, because there's no disruption that's taking place in our industry, the only way we can make that incremental benefit, incremental change is to get those extra benefit incrementally and connecting with people, employing every type of person that can add that incremental value for our clients and for the employees. So to coming back to your questions about training, companies spend very little training in this sector. Um, certainly there should be more emphasis placed on this. And the question is, they don't see the benefit right away. It's a delayed benefit. So companies today want instant results, right? Shareholders are looking at like, okay, how do I get growth, multiple growth instantly? They wouldn't get that instant growth. It's about investment, so it'll take some time. It'll get there, but it's slow right now. So are you for or against more government intervention to speed up along these changes, or do you think it's purely a private sector investment? Um, diversity has moved from what I call the legal obligation phase to what I refer to as the enlightened phase, where there is um, much more acceptance. So when governments tries to implement changes and force companies to do that, it looks like it's an irritating legal thing. That shouldn't be the case. It should be something that's wholeheartedly accepted by the private sector and embraced by the private sector because they should see value that's being created. So my answer is no, it should be completely private sector funded. Of course the government can instigate that changes very gradually but not as a legal obligation but something that's good about for innovation, for um, you know, enlightenment, for growth, that type of thing. Well, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. That was Johan Xavier. He's the regional CFO at Saatchi & Saatchi in Asia Pacific and Greater China.